Hello once again everyone. So I wanted to do just a quick little video because it was on my mind recently and uh, just figured I'd cover it. So this is going to go over how to wrap your cloak. Now there are various different kinds of cloaks slash garments that we see used as an offhand weapon. Uh, specifically throughout the Renaissance they do also have references to it earlier um, and even later. Um, especially we've got some specifics like um, for example, Paul Sector, not Paul, well, yeah, I think Paul Sector Meyer does, but Joachim Meyer, um, it comes up a lot in the Spanish and Italian schools of rapier. You've got Donald McBain mentioned using a coat and things along those lines. So it's a very useful skill to know how to do. But basically, depending upon what sort of cloak apparatus you have, I have a relatively full length wool cloak here. You'll also see capelets, which would only go down to about here. You would have some cloaks that go off to the side versus some are more square on. Uh, jackets, doesn't really matter. But point is, you're going to wrap up your cloak to use as an offhand weapon. Here are some things to look out for slash you want to make sure of. So first and foremost, getting it off of you, you just kind of undo the clasp, right? Whatever clasp apparatus you have, and you want to get hold of the collar, right? Shrug it off of your shoulder and bring it up to the front. Now you're ready to go at this point, but unless you're needing to do this quickly, I recommend that what you do is go ahead and take both sides of the collar and fold that into your hand, right? If you want, you can even hold the clasps as sort of knowing where you are. But what I want to do here is I'm going to wrap it from the inside to the outside. So I'm going to throw it over my arm once, shake it out a little bit to get it square, throw it over again, and then flick forward. So a couple of details about that. Number one, what I'm doing when I do this is I'm not making something that I could necessarily catch a cut with. I mean, I can, it's gonna suck somewhat, but the idea here is that it's more of just a, a padded sort of glove that I can brush things off with, as well as area of denial, as that can actually take a lot of force out of people trying to move around. It's a big object that you've gotta get the blade around if you're attacking that area. But this is not a shield, right? So, so things that I wanna make sure that I have when I utilize it is number one, I wanna make sure that it's tight on my arm, relatively, not like, you know, as tight as it can be. You'll see some people actively wrapping their arm, like sitting there and really wrapping it. This is kind of pointless, right? You want it to be just tight enough that it's not gonna go anywhere, but just loose enough that you can still do some adjustment as you may need to over time. Now, as for length, depends upon what cloak you've got. Uh, my cloak, like I said, is relatively long, and as such, I don't mind necessarily letting a little bit extra hang down. Usually what you want is if you hold your arm out to the side, it should go to about your waist, um, but you can always go a little bit tighter than that if you wish, but you do want some hang down to ensure that you are safe. Now you wanna watch out because as you'll notice, there's kind of a V forming here. You wanna try and keep that relatively square and flat so that way there isn't a gap that you can get through. Now, another important part about this is how far up your arm should go. Usually I like to keep it kind of in middle forearm as opposed to getting close to the elbow. It'll start getting caught on things. It'll start weighing on your arm a little bit more versus right now it's almost kind of sitting in my hand, which is a little bit more convenient. And then you want to keep an eye on how much padding you have right here on the fingers, right? It's very easy for people to forget that their fingers are just sitting there and they're not as protected as you think. Um, I've seen a lot of people accidentally end up punching a cut with their fingers or getting cut just right there because their hand was too close and that sucks a lot. So you wanna make sure that, I've got kind of this little trunk, if you will, if you look at it, right? So there's the cloak that we're wrapped up. It's kind of draped over the end of my hand, like a little trunk is what I imagine that's like. And that's quite good to have as just extra little bits of padding, etc. You don't want it to be purely to the side because then you won't have that little bit of protection. But from here, now I just, you know, I can do all my normal guards and fight, etc. If I want to unfurl the cloak slightly, all I need to do is drop into an outside parry, just, and I'll lose a couple bits. And you notice it'll get kind of tangled up as time goes on. Best thing to do is break distance, get it back to where you want it, right? Quick wrap, shake it forward to get that again. But let's go over that one more time, shall we? So unless you're needing to do things quickly, you grab the collar equally, throttle the collar over from the inside. Okay, so now it's sitting on my hand, shake it out just a little bit, so I've got that cover, over again, we'll go ahead and go twice, you can pull it, boom, there's my cloak, exactly where I want it, nice area denial, relatively padded, pretty much everything I'd like. Now, you will see other um, ways of doing this, and uh, sometimes, like I said, length will matter, so if you have a shorter cloak, 
you may not be able to wrap it as many times. Or alternatively, I've seen images, for example, um, Joachim Meyer, his cloak is wrapped quite tightly, where it's just kind of barely hanging off of here. And you may be using a shorter cloak and thus it's wrapped more, etc. With this size of cloak, it starts to get a little bit cumbersome. Um, you'll also see, or rather hear, reference to doing this with a jacket. Um, Donald McBain's advice is that if you need to, you slip your right arm out of the jacket, keeping your left arm in it, and then wrap it around basically from the shoulder. I have played with that. I personally prefer just taking the whole jacket off and wrapping, but it is the same either way, um, just personal preference there. But, you know, essentially once you've got that, you've got sort of an oven mitt that can be used to defend you without the probability of you getting sliced. But whenever a cut is coming down, make sure that you're focusing with the sword, as this may save you, but it's going to hurt. Um, and certainly, if you are playing in a friendly context, it's very easy to forget about, you know, it's just your fingers underneath there. So do make sure that you're still wearing a padded glove or something along those lines. Or if you want to cheat, um, you know, we have references to people wearing gauntlets under their cloaks. Um, so that way they can basically catch it and no one is the wiser. But either way, just a quick little vid on how to um, uh, wrap cloaks. And as a note, if you want to, for whatever reason, cast your cloak down onto someone's sword, right? What you want to do is as you're fighting, just kind of let your hand drop and that will loosen the cloak over time to eventually the point it's kind of sitting like an extended version of that trunk. From there, if I wish to cast it down, just throw it over and downward onto their sword. You're not going to be throwing it at them. You're going to be throwing it down to the space between you to hopefully hook onto their sword and weigh it down for just long enough to get that hit in. But you need to capitalize on that action quickly. That, however, is a thing for another time. For now, though, just how to wrap your, uh, wrap your cloak. Hope that's useful. And if you have any other particular cloak methods or, or things that you've done in sparring or what have you, then by all means share them in the comments below. Um, otherwise, we shall go over some other nifty tricks another time.